t-shirt was a dare that nobody thought I would ever do that, that I'd show up to preach in jeans and a t-shirt, much less if I actually owned a pair of jeans. And one bad thing is I was doing that specifically for Valerie, and then she didn't come today, and I thought, oh, man. <laughs> and I, yeah, that's we've already, Dion already took care of that. And what's funny is I remember when I was in high school, um, the first time that I decided I was going to wear a pair of Levi's 501s to church, and I was old enough to drive, and so I had my own car. And then when I got there and my dad saw that I was in jeans, it was like, you don't wear those to church. But it, it's funny how, how times change on things like that. It's so well here. <laughs> exactly. But speaking of my dad, uh, one of his favorite things was to turn negatives into positives. And what he was really good at was he was the person who could take people from being angry to being his best friend. And he had a way of deflecting garbage with his laugh and his smile. And if you ever talked to him for very long, he was the kind of person who he could sit there and he could talk in rhyme for 15 minutes without stop. And when you would talk to him, you had no idea when he was joking or when he was being serious. And one of the things I loved about him is he was always the first person to forgive people and he was also the first person to forget. And one of the things that a lot of people really didn't know about him was that through our business every year, he would always give away two to three times his annual income. He was a generous man. And he was the sort of person that everybody loves. And we used to have pastors who'd come to our office all the time and when they needed somebody to talk to where they knew it wasn't going to come back on him, he was the person that everybody came and talked to. And my whole life, everywhere I went, it didn't matter when, where, why, or how. Everywhere I went, everybody said, oh, you're Jerry's son. It wasn't your Craig. It's your Jerry's son. And he was a person who cast a big shadow that was hard to walk out of. And everybody loved him. And I miss him more every day. And by the way, everything that I just said about him, you could also say that about his dad and his dad and his dad before him. And for me, I'm trying to live up to their example, but I know that I have a long way to go. I know that my fuse is a lot shorter than theirs. And for me, I'm pers forgiving isn't my issue. Forgetting is mine. We all have our issues and things that we can work on. And my goal is to be able to love the same way that my dad loved. Now, why in the world am I telling you guys all this? I want you to hear my heart. And we all have the capacity to love more than we do. And I'm trying to paint a mental picture of what love looks like so that today's passage will come to life. And if everybody could please stand while we read God's word, and it'll be in your bulletins, or if you turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, Give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, 
but overcome evil with good. May God bless the reading of His Word. You may be seated. I don't know about you guys, but there is a ton of good truth buried in that one passage there. And one thing that's funny, when, when you write sermons, a lot of the times I have things aimed at specific people that God puts on my heart. And today, today's sermon is aimed at me. And hopefully I'm not the only one who can take this message to heart today. But let's start with verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. What Paul is telling us here is we have to really love people. It's different to say that you love somebody and to actually love them. And when you actually love somebody, it's obvious. And that's what Paul is talking about here when when he says sincerity. You know it. You can tell when something is genuine and when something is fake. And in the next sentence here, Paul is telling us to hate what is evil and to cling to what is good. And I think that Paul would consider anger, jealousy, revenge, spite, gossip, and envy to all be evil. And I think that he would consider on the other side of the coin things like compassion and mercy and generosity, grace and sacrifice to all be good things. Let's look at verse 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Love is the foundation that Jesus built His church upon. And you can spot somebody who gets it by how they love people. And if we can master the concept of love, everything else in our lives is going to be a piece of cake. You can spot the people who get it. And a true test of somebody's character is whether they take care of themselves first or whether they take care of somebody else first. And when you can see that person who takes care of somebody else first, that speaks volumes about how much they love that other person. Let's look at verse 11. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. We should never get tired of doing good. Things like mash. When you sit there and you say there's a whole lot of work that, you know, it ends up doing things like staining carpets and we end up, you know, you know, you lose money, there's utility bills that go with it, there's hours and hours of work. But you know what? When we need to keep that picture out there for what we're really doing, we're showing people love. We're showing them that we care. We're trying to help people to have hope. And it's amazing how a little $5 food box can go a long ways towards doing that. And have you ever noticed that if you're really down in the dumps, the best way to get out of it is to do something for somebody else. When you do that, it's amazing how you get blessed more than doing something fun for yourself. And that's something that you really don't see it until you actually live it and do it. And last Tuesday night out at the park, there was this little lady, who she chased me down in tears, and she asked if I had a blanket that I could give her. And she told me that she sleeps on dirt and that all that she wanted to be able to do was curl up in the blanket. And praise God, I had a blanket in the back end of my truck. And what was really cool was she didn't want money. What she wanted was the security that you get from a blanket. And she wanted to see that somebody loves her for who she is, where she is. And she gave me a big hug, and I told her that Jesus loves her. And here at church, Bruce, he's our hugger. He hugs everybody. And one of the best gifts that you can ever give anybody is a true, sincere hug. Hugging shows love in a way that words just really can't. And in regards to my interaction with her that night, I can tell you that being able to meet her need 
and being able to pray with her, that that was the most rewarding thing that I've done in the last couple of weeks. It was just something that was simple and small. It doesn't have to be some huge earth-changing thing. It's just truly showing somebody that you love them, that you care about them, taking the time to listen to what they have to say. That's how we can show people Christ's love. And to me, you know, it was just a simple little $20 blanket. But to her, I think that it represented hope, security, and love. And we're all capable of doing that. And that night out there at the park, Channel 3 News crew was out there doing a special on the park. And I can tell you that my selfish side, I was sitting there and I could see the camera crew was there. And the selfish side has that, I want to get on TV. I want to, I want to be able to hear, have people hear what we're doing out here. But what was funny was that the Holy Spirit had a different thing for me. And he just told me that I, I needed to talk to her. I needed to help her. And whenever God starts leaning on you about something, we just need to learn how to be obedient with that. And Pastor Mike and Tammy did a great job on that. I don't know if any of you guys saw it on Channel 3 News, but yeah, they chopped it down to each one about a half a sentence. But at the end of the day, we're making a difference. And even if it's, and, and, I, and I heard a number that I didn't even know until last week, that there have been 60 people who've either gotten off the streets who are, or are in rehab just this year alone as a result of that ministry. Do you know how incredible that is? A group the size of ours being able to touch that many people. That's totally a God thing. We're just out there serving food and showing love. God's doing the rest in the background. And that's what we need to be focused on. And the cool thing for me that night was I had my head in a whole bunch of other different things I was thinking about, and it totally changed my whole perspective that night. And whenever we keep our eyes on Jesus, and when we're focusing on other people, and we're obedient to the calling of the Holy Spirit, when we're looking out for other people, that's when Jesus takes care of us. If we're focused on other people, He'll take care of us. We're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Let's look at verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. That's some profound truth that's written down there. And I love the idea of being joyful in hope. And the question that I'd ask you here, are you looking forward to the future or are you dreading it? Paul's telling us here that we need to be joyful about what's coming. And he wants us to have hope. And he knows all the incredible things that God has lined up for each and every one of us. But then again, he's also telling us here to be patient in affliction. He knows that we're all going to have speed bumps in life. But we need to be patient and trust that God's going to be taking care of our future for us. And God's promised that he'll meet us that He will take care of our needs for today. What our problem is, is that we're focused on tomorrow and the next day and the next day after that, not on what we need today. We need to focus on today because God has promised that He'll meet our needs today. And Paul's also telling us here that we need to be faithful in prayer. And the key to prayer, it's actually pretty simple. You need to pray things that you know that God is going to do. If you don't believe that God's going to answer it, then there is absolutely zero faith involved. And if there's no faith involved, that's when you pray and it feels like it's just hitting the ceiling and bouncing right back at you. We have to have faith. And we need to learn how to pray from a heart of gratitude thanking God for what he know, we know that he's going to be doing for us, not out of some kind of a sense of entitlement. Because we need to understand that God doesn't owe us anything. 
And I want to say that again. God doesn't owe us anything. He gives to us through His grace. And the definition of grace is unmerited favor, which is just a fancy way of saying that He's giving to us out of love, not out of some sense of obligation, not because He owes it to us, but He does it out of love. Love for each and every one of us. And when we pray, we need to not just ask for our needs. We need to thank Him and praise Him for the incredible things that He's done in the past and that we know that He's going to do in the future. And one thing, prayer is its most powerful and effective when we don't ask for anything for ourselves. And if it's been a while since you've prayed for somebody else where you didn't have any stake in it at all, I'd challenge you to give that a try. When you see, it's one thing to see God answer a prayer in your life. It's a totally different animal when you're praying for somebody and you see that God answers prayer for somebody else. And those are the prayers that God is faithful to answer when He can see that we love other people, that we have a concern for their needs above our own. And you'll just be shocked how often God answers those prayers. And we need to expect good things from God. God, He isn't sitting there as some vindictive dictator wanting to control us and manipulate us. He loves us. And He wants only the best for us. And we just need to keep that in mind. And if you're the sort of person that you expect everything to go wrong, it's probably going to go wrong. But if you're the sort of person who anticipates that God's going to take care of us, that everything's going to be fine, guess what? It will be. And that's, that's what faith is, is expecting that God's going to do good things. And we need to practice trusting Him. None of us like to let go of control of things. We need to learn how to trust God. And when we praise God, that's when you can sit there and you can watch Him starting to pour out His favor on everything that you touch. When His hand is on it, there are no limits to what we can do. And God inhabits the praises of His people. Let's take a peek at verse 13. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Have you ever heard the phrase, you can never outgive God? One of my favorite scriptures is Luke 6.38. And actually, that's the verse that Pastor Jim Deal preached from in my church in Denver. And if anybody doesn't know that, he's one of the general superintendents of our church. The, the day that, that I prayed for entire sanctification. So it's one of those verses that means a lot to me. But in Luke 6.38, it says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. In other words, the more you give, the more you get. And you'll find that when you give what you think that you don't have, what you think that you can't spare, you'll be surprised how God multiplies what you do have and how God's there to meet the need. And when you look back on it, you go, there's no way I could have done that on my own. That's the way that God works. And I can guarantee you that God will never take food off of your table when you give to other people who are in need. And in addition to giving, Paul's also telling us to practice hospitality. We need to not only give to other people, but we need to learn how to serve them as well. True love is shown through service. Let's look at verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. 
when I read that, and the first word that came to my mind was, seriously? <laughs> the last thing that you want to do is bless somebody when they're persecuting you. Your first reaction is you want to curse them. And that's not what God's telling us to do here. And what Paul would tell us when we have those feelings, what he would tell me when I'm having those feelings, is he'd say, you don't get it. He'd say that love is not optional. And anyone can love the people that loves us. And it takes an extra portion of God's grace to be able to love somebody who you know hates you. Let's look at verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. What Paul's talking about here is the concept of empathy. If somebody is happy, we need to share in their happiness with them. I can't think of anything worse than when you've got really good news, something you're excited about, something you're looking forward to, and you go and you tell it to somebody, and the first thing they do is they pick it apart and find the ten things that are wrong with it. When that happens, I guarantee you that's not the person you go to the next time you have good news. We need to be happy with people when they're excited about something. And on that same note, when you're trying to mourn, when you're grieving, a true friend slows down and listens to you. And I, we all know it. There's nothing fun about that. There's nothing fun about listening to somebody just dump all their problems onto you. However, when you're going through the fires of life, look around and see who's there with you. That's who you know who loves you. Because nobody goes there by choice. The only reason that people are there is because they love you. And that's a really good test. And that's something good to think about when you know that person needs that word of encouragement. They need somebody to be able to dump all their problems on know that that's, that's how you can show love, how you can make it practical. Let's look at verse 16. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Have you ever heard the saying, you're too big for your britches? If you see yourself as being superior to somebody else, you know you're in trouble at that point. I don't think there's anything that God hates worse than selfish pride. And I can tell you that God, He's not going to bless statements like, I'm too good to do this. I'm too good to do that. That's not worth my time. There's no way I'm going to waste my money on that. If Jesus would have thought that way, there's absolutely no way that He would have hung on the cross for us. He loved us even though we weren't worthy of that love. And that's the kind of love that we need to learn how to show. Let's look at verses 17 and 18. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Remember the saying from the 60s, make peace, not war? I think Paul would agree totally with that concept. And he's driving home the idea that we need to be able to make peace at all costs. Let's look at verse 19. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to revenge, I will repay, says the Lord. We need to leave the judgment to God. He'll sort it all out. Don't waste your time trying to get even. All that's going to do is rob you of your joy. It'll be the only thing that consumes your thoughts is how you can get even, how you can do this, how you can do that. We need to learn how to, to put those things in the past and forget about it. And one thing that's really ironic here is that when you show somebody love, what you get in return is love right back. If you show somebody hate, what you get back is hate. I want you to really think about that. That's a pretty 
simple statement. And it really, at first glance, you think it really can't be that simple, can it? But it really is. That's what Paul's trying to communicate to us here. If we show love, we'll get love. If we show hate, we're going to get hate. And if we've got that mindset going on, it makes it a lot easier to love people. Let's look at verse 20. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. What my dad used to say on that was, kill him with kindness. When you have somebody who's angry, try lobbing something nice back at them. And what you're going to find is if that person has a forgiving spirit, once again, you're going to get love right back. And if they don't show it back, if you see the angry coming back, that's when you can say, okay, I, I did my best. And that's the best way to be able to respond. And like Paul says here, it's like pouring burning coals on their head. Because the last thing they want to hear is you saying you love them while they're in the process of going off. We need to learn how to love. And I can tell you that's, that's something that I need to work on. We all have our weaknesses. And one thing that I'm very thankful for is that God can use imperfect people. If he couldn't, all, the, all of us here, we'd all be useless. What God wants from us is to truly show, our, show his love coming through us. If we can get that one simple thing down, all the rest of it's going to fall into line. Now, what do I want you guys to take home today? About five years ago, I installed a sound system in a little church in Fort Morgan, Colorado. Little, little small town. And everyone in that church had a little simple bumper sticker. And what it said was, it just said, love wins. Which is about as simple as it gets. Love wins. And I think that Jesus' whole ministry could be summarized in those two words. Love wins. If we can learn how to love, that's when we're going to be true followers of Christ. And if we can lead with love, we're always going to win in the long run. And if we can love the way that Jesus loved, we're going to have people following us. The reason being, they're going to want what we have. And I want to tell you that there is no limit on the supply of love. God's love is infinite. God's love is free. And God's love is there for the taking. Our contribution is when we receive that love, we need to give away as much as we can. And the more that we give away, the more we're going to get. And that's just a cycle that will just keep feeding itself. Amen. And it really is that simple. We just need to learn to love. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I just pray that you would help each of us to learn how to love. That you would help us to be able to put aside feelings of anger, feelings of wanting revenge, feelings of anything that separates us from you. And I just pray that for anybody here who's struggling with this today, that you would just have your Holy Spirit just bend way down low and, and show your love to them. To know that, that you care about each and every one of us. We need to learn how to trust you. We just thank you. And I just pray that you would just help each and every one of us to to have it to where people can see you working in and through our lives. And we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen.